Hi there, this is Cloudless Studio and what you just saw is my newest game, The Rat Catcher. If the game looks fun to you or you want to learn more, go to the description and you can find the Steam page. And if you want, drop a wish list. that would definitely help me out. In this devlog, I will mostly show time lapses of me working on this and I will kind of talk through how this came to be. Because lately I've been kind of unmotivated to make games and I was almost going to give up on the previous project, which I kind of pushed back because I realized I needed to work on something smaller. When I say smaller, it means something that I could realistically finish in a couple of months. So when people make smaller games, they usually go for either like a simple platformer or a horror game. And I kind of wanted to do that. Now, if you can't tell by the art style already, it's sort of like a homage to the early Elder Scrolls slash Ultima games where it's... 3D, but it's still kind of pixel arty. And that's the kind of vibe I was going for. I feel like most indie shooters are kind of just low poly 3D and I kind of wanted to stand out a little bit. So I kind of went with this 2D sprite sort of animation based style, kind of like what Cultic does. But then again, this is not really a first person shooter. It is a first person game, but it's more of like a horror game. And I kind of wanted to add that arcadey style to it with the rat collection. So essentially the main premise of this game is that you're a rat catcher that gets sent down to these various creepy locations. And the main idea is to avoid all the monsters and collect all the rats. The collecting is kind of similar to the old Slender game that everybody played a couple of years ago, but um, it's a bit more difficult to find all the rats as there's a bunch of enemies crawling around. So you kind of have to avoid them. And as you can see, the player also has a lantern that you kind of have to manage the fuel for. And you can, of course, loot some extra fuel. But if it goes out, it goes out and it's very dark and it kind of makes the exploration a bit more difficult. Now, you also get a gun, which is useful because it does knock the enemies down, but you have a limited amount of bullets. Now, one cool feature that I literally kind of stole from Dark Souls is the pebbles, which you can drop and kind of mark the locations that you visited. Now you have a limited amount, of course, but I do think they come in handy if you get lost in a dungeon. Now, all the animations, I really wanted them to look pretty realistic. So I used what's called rotoscoping and mostly I recorded myself and then drew over the animations in a sprite. Now, I think that kind of gives us this cool effect because it's sort of realistic movements, but with pixel art, which I haven't really seen lately. So I'm hoping that people will find it fairly refreshing. The game will have three different stages. So far I've completed the first one, but basically every stage will require you to collect a certain amount of rats and avoid the enemies and then kind of make your way to the exit in the fastest time possible. So there's definitely some replayability the first level being the sewers, I kind of went for this like sewer ghoul type of monster, which it might be a bit cliche, but I think it works fairly well. And there's a little bit of a jump scare whenever you first encounter them, which I mean, every horror game should do that a little bit, try to scare you at least. And these enemies are sort of avoidable, but they are also pretty dangerous. You can shoot them, but like I said, you have a limited amount of bullets, so it's best to kind of avoid them and run around. And of course, if you're smart about it, you can easily outrun them and outmaneuver them into a new direction. I've also added these loot boxes, um, not monetization, but loot in terms of the game, where you can get a random item or nothing at all, which kind of gives that RNG value to the run a player might make in a game. Now, another thing that I really wanted to focus while making this is kind of learning new things because it's important to, as you're a indie dev, I guess, to learn new techniques of coding and making art. And I've really wanted to make this kind of nasty water sewer shader where the water kind of moves around and it kind of has that weird green tint to it. And I had to learn a little bit about Gerstner waves which is this sort of algorithm for a shader that creates waves. And I think I pulled it off pretty well. And the water looks pretty good, especially to the fact that you kind of do need to go into it. And I added a little bit of a toxicity meter that will kill you if you stay there too long. But like I said, it's not impossible to get out of it. I've also made a lot of the textures with this dither filter, which kind of is an old school way of shading. 
pretty much what happens is the image gets pixelated by these little dots that kind of create lights and shadows. And some of the models, especially the walls, um, have that filter applied, which kind of adds that old school aesthetic to the game. Um, I've also composed music for this game, which is something not really new. I've done it before, but I found this really good VST that has these kind of sort of mysterious otherworldly sounds. And I made a couple themes, which you'll hear if you buy the game. And it's definitely a fun process to make sort of these ambient tracks. But I think that sort of ambience kind of adds onto the experience of the horror game. Whereas like silence would kind of make this game a little bit too dry. Overall, this game is kind of like an art project for me, more than a programming project, because I just kind of want to explore these new sort of styles. If you've followed me in the past, you know that I mostly make these sort of make videos, and I just wanted to try something new. Now, I see myself more as an artist game developer than sort of like a coder game developer, so it's definitely a necessity for me to make the game look unique. I will be definitely releasing this game as soon as I can. I still have two levels to make, but it's pretty much just level design, which I absolutely hate, and 3D modeling, and drawing the assets. Believe it or not, pixel art takes a long time to make, and I want to have the other levels to be a little bit different and have a little bit of a twist to them, right? So that's going to take some thinking, but I'm on a good path to actually finish this game, and that's a very important thing in game dev for sure. But overall, currently we're sitting at 20 wish lists, which is not a lot. I'm kind of hoping that after this video we'd get to 100, which will just make me more eager to finish and create this game for you guys. But I appreciate all the support and the encouragement. Um, a lot of my friends have said many good things about the game. A lot of people on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, by the way, Cloud Studio, have said wonderful things about the game. I even have Oliver Joyce, the guy who made Swords and Sandals, say that my game looks great, which is just a huge compliment. But other than that, please wish us the game and thank you for watching. See you later.